and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That whatever they did, the rest of the world was supposed to follow. They were supposed to always keep the commandments and statutes of the Most High given to them so that they could be the witness in the earth, but they did not because the Most High is the Most High and that he had a better plan because he knew they wouldn't be able to keep that Torah of Moses. It led to them being completely displaced, complete exile, no kingdom, geographically displaced, and this has been happening for uh, centuries, millennia. But the moral of the story is that Jesus himself was a black man. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were black men, okay? The 12 tribes of Israel, black men. And the reason that matters is because all these things come from the Bible and that the Bible was all written by black men. <laughs> Abraham's father was a Chaldean. Chaldeans were started by Ethiopians. Ethiopians were black men. Tahor also Abraham's father would have been a black man, more than likely, or he would have been very dark, okay? He wouldn't have been the fair-skinned Caucasians that you see in Israel now. He wouldn't have seen the Jews that you see with the tendrils. Uh, those are not the 12 tribes of Israel. Those are not the Shemites. All the ancient ancestors that we get our entire structure from, books, modern mathematics, judicial systems, all these things come from the Bible and that the Bible was all written by black men. The most coveted book on the earth. It's a story about black people. And that's what's coming. That's the good news. And that's what we're here for. And we must hold fast to this belief. You can read it knowing that he was talking to the Jews, bro. Every book, every passage you read, my G, learn your culture. This is your culture. The most coveted book on the earth. It's a story about black people, but also the Father's great plan to restore all people into one people. And the reason it's important, black Americans got their history stolen, their identity taken from them. But you didn't get it taken from you. Because it's right here. We can get it back by reading this book and understand that this is what it's about. When we pop up in these scriptures and we start to read, he's talking to us, the Hebrews, the ones who revere his name. It's 1126. Paul says, all Israel will be saved. Who does he mean exactly, as far as we can tell from the scriptures, as who all Israel is? Uh, it's, it's pretty clear if you put that together with the whole picture eschatologically, all Israel will be national Israel in the future. In the future. All Israel will be saved at some point. Point. Right now, individual Jews here, there, but as a people, they, they have not come back to their Messiah. In the future, God will sovereignly save the nation. It's firstborn, right? Because a promise was given to us, and the Lord is not going to break His promise. That promise was to a seed, okay? A seed of people, a perpetual seed, right? which is likened to a nation, was likened to a people, right? And it's going to come by all 12 tribes of familiar, of, of familiar people, right? Which is different than the set. We all the set of the sea. We all have the different diverse gifts. But we are, we all are Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it, for Judah, and for the children of Israel, his companions, then take another stick, and write upon it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, 